Hello everyone! Welcome back to the worst album ever made, where today we're going to be talking about the Lemon Kittens 1980 album, We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> That's right, everyone. On the last episode of Worst Album Ever Made, during the post credit scene, I spun the Wheel of Wame and landed on this. This is the Lemon Kittens' We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. This thing right here is absolutely insane. And before we talk about what is inside this hidden gem, uh, I have to ask the question, who are the Lemon Kittens? <laughs> the Lemon Kittens were an experimental rock group started by Carl Blake and Gary Thrasher in the summer of 1978. After releasing a couple of EPs, Gary soon left the group and was soon replaced by Danielle Dax, a name that would get a fairly successful solo career in the UK. And frankly, she's just extremely badass in general. For the rest of Lemon Kitten's life, other members would soon come and go, but the band eventually ended sometime in 1982, where their extended hibernation ended up never going away. And the album we're going to be talking about today is Lemon Kitten's debut solo full-length album, We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. What a strange name for an album, We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. It's pretty strange, and the origin of the name comes from an old ladybird book called Shopping with Mother. And just as strange as the album is this really crazy artwork designed by Daniel Dax herself. I'm not, I don't really know exactly what this album art is trying to convey, but if I was going to take a guess, I would say one of them is representing Danielle and the other one uh, representing Carl. But who knows, I could be entirely wrong and it could just be just a little doodle. Uh, I have no clue. So yeah, that is the Lemon Kittens. Uh, so now I guess I'm just going to go ahead and dive into the first song that we're going to talk about off this album, which is entitled PVS. On a counterpane of glass. You're forgetting Creed and Claus. Okay. It's now time for me to address the elephant in the room. This album's great. It is. It's a, it's a really good album. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time here with Lemon Kitten's We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. And I know for people who are just coming on in to listen to, like, me talk about a bad album, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen today. I am actually talking about how good the Lemon Kitten's album is, and maybe highlight a couple of flaws I saw with it, but mostly... I enjoyed this thing. If you got yourself the CD version right here, you'll find out that PVS stands for Power Viewed Subjectively. And when you listen to the song, you are going to be like, what in the world are they talking about? I can hardly understand what's going on. But when you take the time and you re-listen to the song and you re-listen to the song, you realize that what they're doing is not just saying gibberish. Like, that's what I assumed what it was at first. I thought it was absurdist for absurdist's sake. But after reading all the lyrics, I think the Lemon Kittens do a very fantastic job on for, uh, trying to tell a story or give a message in this weird and twisted, like, like crazed way. Well, no ambition. They're true unto themselves. Oh, that two face. Yes. Two diamond-like shits on a counter pane of glass, in a room where little flies bleed. You're forgetting Creed and class. But why? They've no ambition. They're true unto themselves. Devour their two faces. No, leave me to my trance. In a room where flies bleed and we take time to dance meaninglessly. I could have easily miss the mark on this, but I think what they are trying to say in PVS, with the title being Powered Viewed Subjectively, I think this song is about passionate lovers. And I think that these people who have like no ambition, they have nothing going on in their lives, when they are together in passionate lovemaking, 
they feel like the most powerful people on the planet. At the same time, you have this like little bit of a love story going on in this song, but then you couple it in with its very anxious and very sporadic performance. It sounds like you took like a Talking Heads album and then you just threw it in the dryer 50 times. This thing is insane sounding. And yes, I admit that I really, really like PVS, and I, and I like so many songs off this album. I think they're really good. Now, is it something that I would, like, take on a road trip with me? Hey, Garrett. Yeah? No. Uh, maybe too much. Can we li maybe listen to something else? No. I mean, probably not, but still, I really do like it. The next song we're going to talk about is a song called Small Mercies. My baby, he said he didn't care too much what he did. And, and if it hurt me, well, that was just too bad. If it hurt me, it was just too bad. Small Mercies is a very haunting sounding song. It has the same feeling and vibe of going down catacombs and caves, just spelunking for the next new danger. And meanwhile, the song itself is about the perspective of a mother. This mother it hates her child and hates what her child has become. And we don't really know exactly what that means. We don't know what her child has done, but she's saying that Ever since she, the child was born, and as soon as the child left the cradle, the child has done nothing but want to hurt people and, and cause pain to others. He's just a strange type, but I love him because he tells me to. That's what all of us should do, and do, isn't it? Do you think serial killers, their moms, like truly love them still after they commit these horrible acts and how conflicted they would feel they feel like somehow that's their fault that that happened and sometimes it's not like it's not at all and it's something I never thought about before and this mother is in in is, is, is in an awful situation and she sounds pain throughout Danielle's performance is scary and I think she does a phenomenal job painting this atmosphere. I love this song so much. Now I'm not talking about every song off this album this time around but I am going to be talking about my least favorite song off the album, just to be fair, and this song is called Coasters. Coasters on the edge. Coasters is a pretty long song in comparison to all the other songs off the album, and it kind of meanders around a little bit. In the song Coasters, you have the same piano riff uh, uh, constantly repeated. And you have this voice, this droning voice, uh, just sing to you the entire time. So what do you think? Coasters is a song that I really don't know what they're trying to go for. Um, and they're using a lot of analogies with roller coasters, saying that his life is a coaster on the edge. Uh, what it could be like is life is about to go downhill, or it could be about someone who has no motivation in life, uh, someone who has no get up and go. They're just kind of sitting there looking at the ground and being freaked out. It, but I don't really know what it's going for. But I do like the feeling that it gives off. Uh, the How like the song works, it, it, it's, it's giving you like a creepy vibe. 
And that kind of goes with every song off this album. It's very creepy, but you don't really know why it's creepy. It just kind of is. Like, it's just stuff just seems a little bit off. It doesn't seem like everything's right. And when that happens, you end up getting freaked out a little bit. And that's something that's really cool when it comes to a Lemon Kittens song. The next song is called Up in Arms. Put your freaking hands up. <laughs> song is about gun control. Yay! Now whether or not you are pro-gun or against gun, I think you could probably still see where the Lemon Kittens are coming from with their message on this song. So they're saying that when people own guns, they feel more secure. I don't want to be robbed and I don't want to be killed in my sleep with another person with a gun, so I want a gun. And it's kind of funny that this cold steel little device here is something that's used to feel comforting. Because it is a device that's literally designed to point and shoot and kill. And it's funny that this is a symbol of comfort. <laughs> And since people like to have a gun to feel more secure, you just kind of ramp that up to an extra scale. How would a country feel more secure? Nuclear bombs. So now the entire world has bombs and now no one feels secure. Because at any moment, people could just say, you know what, screw it, let's just kill everybody. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> So yeah, I think that's a very unique observation, and I think it's a really, really cool song idea. And I and I love all all of it. I love all of it. It's a great little ditty. The next song is called Evidence. I think this song is giving me hemorrhoids. This song is delightfully weird. It is sung in a very weird and strange way, and that's because most likely the protagonist in the song, the speaker of the song, is a being from another planet. This alien creature we're talking to is talking about how they really, really, really want to be friends with Earth. They want to talk to Earth and have a real connection. But unfortunately, that's not happening because Earth is always in turmoil. People are fighting with each other. And that's why the alien is saying, I, I really, really wish, wish we could know you, know you but, but you don't, you don't want, want to know us. us. You don't, you don't want, want to better your society. society. And so the alien is just kind of sad about that. The song has very sci-fi feels to it, filled with lots of crazy little sound effects and crazy little drum effects. But I think the number one thing the song is known for would be Danielle Dax's very weird singing, which makes sense because, again, this is an alien that we are, that we are talking with. So, yeah. Now this song is called Afraid of Being Bled by Leeches. Now isn't that fun? Afraid of being bled by leeches We run for cover in a pagan church What this song is pretty much about is it's about the war between Christianity and paganism and it's saying that to some people, to the Lemon Kittens, it's saying that if you are not Christian, and at least the United Kingdom, uh, you are seen as a very, very bad person, and someone that must be eradicated. Someone who must be changed to be a very specific way. And that is just how they're feeling. The leeches in question, when I first listened to it, I assume this had to do something about, like, uh, different medical practices or something, but I realize that now the leeches are Christians, the people in the high-ranking Christian like societies, people who ask for donations and and your money and your time, 
uh, to feed into the Christian religion. And this person is afraid of being manipulated and be taken advantage of by those Christian elites, people maybe in the Catholic Church, like the Pope and all, and all of them. And that's what the song is about, which I find very interesting. I can't wait to go to the beach. The next song is called Pain Topics. Pain Topics is a very serious song because it deals with a very, very serious uh, subject matter, which is a miscarriage. Um, with, with, with the, with the subject of, of the, of, of the matter at question, um, it's, it's talking in very great detail ab about the, about the miscarriage and... It's so disjointed, it's, it's another thing where it's so awkward and alien, it makes the whole experience even more horrifying, and, and, yeah, it, it's, it's a very, very bleak and, and scary sounding song, and, I, I'm just gonna move on. Next song is called These Men of Old England. This body, this case, pushing my tail is pulling here. Why don't they raise a little? Not too much. Plouched in places, one start like a with her. These Men of Old England is, a, is about uh, a song that's saying how much we hate the old guard. It kinda is a good companion piece with uh, Afraid of Being Bled by Leeches. This is a, a young perspective saying, we hate these, these old people in government that have been running everything with the same philosophy over and over again. It's time for a change. And that's why These Men of Old England is such a defiant, angry song. <laughs> saying, we hate these people. Put them on a little raft and have them float into the ocean. That's what we need here. A change by any means necessary. <coughs> I think, I think, I think I need to open the window. Garrett. Yep. Dude, yes. What is going on in here? Okay. What is all the smoke? You know, I'm recording right now. And I know, but the alarm's going off right now. Uh, Are you making a fire? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing it, okay? I'm fixing it. Next song is called Wrist Job, Once Green Pleasant Land. This is one of the weirdest songs off the album. It's, it's very out of left field. Uh, you hear someone who sounds like maybe like a, a superhero kind of person who's saying like, help is on the way. 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 I clutch my rabbit's foot to raise, touching wood like all the rest. <laughs> and then you get this weird operatic, like, song that's, that's like, tie, like, tied to it. It doesn't really sound like these are two like songs that were made to be together. It sounds like you took two songs and then you just duct taped them together and then you just stapled it all into a big ball and that's the song. It's kind of funny that way. This just sounds like Curse the Cowardly Dog to me. It does! It does sound like Curse the Cowardly Dog! <laughs> <laughs> but what does it mean? Well, I, with a little bit of context clues, I can come up with a little bit of something. Uh, I think this song is about how people aren't urgent enough to help the Earth. Uh, the superhero person was talking about how uh, we, we get on and pray for things to get better, and uh, nothing's really happening. 
because he's praying. Uh, pray and touch the bark and hopeful, hopefully like everything gets a little bit better. And I think the operatic version is maybe like the personification of Earth. Maybe this is Mother Earth who's like crying out because she needs help and no one's really helping her. That's, that's just a little bit of what I'm trying to think is going on. Uh, it's very interesting and it is kind of a blast to listen to because it's it just so odd. It's so weird. And that's kind of cool. Anyway, that was Rich Job, Once Green, Pleasant Land. The final song I'm going to talk about on this album is the song Throat Violence, the second to last song off the album. <laughs> The instrumental is really cool. It sounds like it's introducing some sleazy biker who's playing pool in the back of a shady bar. Uh, it's it's so cool sounding. Uh, I feel like I should be putting on some shades and snapping my fingers with a leather jacket on. <laughs> now, what throat violence is about? Well. Uh, it is about this failed relationship. Uh, Danielle is uh, talking about how there's this guy who would always fight with her, like, and get into huge arguments. And almost all of the time, it was all about religion. The differences between religions and that cause fights between someone that Danielle really liked. And that's what the whole thing is about. And that is the throat violence. <laughs> craziest things about the instrumental of this song is several times it just stops. It will have huge stops and then there would be an awkward pause and it brings you in and it says, is this the end of the song? And then it kicks back in. It's almost playing a game with you. This album has lots of unique themes to it. Like, it has the fear of becoming a mother, it has talks about miscarriage and love and hating the old guard and, and the conflict between people who can't get along because of religion. And, and all of this makes for a very interesting experience. And I think that's just some of the reasons why this album right here works so well. And the fact that it is so, it, it's all over the place. It's so like jittery and manic and filled with anxiety goes with all of those themes that the album is trying to portray to you. And I think if it sounded any different, I think all the themes and the things they're trying to say would mean a lot less without that kind of craziness to it. And I think that's really cool. So yeah, that was the Lemon Kittens We Buy a Hammer for Daddy. Now the question we have to ask now is does this belong on the board of shame here? Uh, guess what? Uh, you probably already know my answer. Uh, that's no. So. So, so I guess, I, I guess the, I, I guess the video is just over.
Surprise, motherfuckers. It was Adam Ant the whole time.